what scientists call the quantum life, the quantum world, is really the kingdom of God. Jesus operated inside that world, and he showed what life in that culture looks like. Jesus was the greatest quantum person who's ever lived. His lifestyle, though, was a lifestyle that confounded those that lived with him, that still didn't have the eyes to see the greater reality that surrounded them, and in fact, it was inside them. The disciples and those that saw Jesus couldn't make any sense out of his actions because they defied the logic. But the reason why is Jesus was living a different kind of life. He lived a quantum life. Now listen carefully. A quantum life is a lifestyle animated by divine energy. Quantum is just the way science explains it. This was the life Jesus lived. Here's what Jesus said about the things he did. He said this, for instance, in John chapter 7. He said, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. Over in John 14, Jesus said, The words you hear me say, not mine. I've not even come on my own initiative, he said in John 8. I do nothing on my own initiative, he said in the fifth chapter of John. Jesus affirmed repeatedly a life source that animated his actions. What was this life source? It was divine energy. Understand that Jesus is God, but Jesus always referred to himself as the Son of Man. And so he lived as a man tapped into the power of God, the source, and the kingdom of God. And by living out of that power, he did things that made no sense to his disciples. And so they would see him do things, and they didn't understand it. For instance, remember when he spoke to the tree and it died? Remember he cursed the tree and it died? There's a word for that in science. It's called quantum resonance. There's a scientific explanation for that. Or remember when he appeared in the upper room behind closed doors that were locked? Now we know there's a scientific explanation for that. It's called quantum teleportation. I mean, the things Jesus did, when he said, I and my Father are one, what he was stating there was a quantum principle. It's called quantum entanglement. And so Jesus lived a quantum life. And his disciples said to him, listen, this is what's exciting. They said, how do you do that? We want to be able to do these things. How do you do it? And Jesus said this, now we get it. He said, uh, there's so much that I could tell you, but you're not able to bear it now. You wouldn't understand if I told you. Now, back, the, back this thing up a minute. I've just told you that right here in the 21st century, science is explaining how some of these miracles happened that Jesus performed. They said to Jesus, how do you do it? And he said, well, I could tell you, but you wouldn't understand it. But then he went on and he said, but I'm going to go away. And when I go away, I'm going to send a teacher back, and that teacher will guide you into all truth. Guess what? Woohoo! <laughs> We're living in the day <laughs> where that teacher is teaching us all this truth. All this. We're seeing now some of the miracles, the science behind it. Now, no, 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 no. Listen, listen. Somebody said to me one time, they said, well, that takes the miraculous out of it. I think it was Isaac, I mean, uh, Albert Einstein, who was reputed to have said, you can see the world in one of two ways. You can see it in a way that nothing is a miracle, or you can see it in a way that everything is a miracle. The miracles of Jesus did not defy science. St. Augustine said it like this. Augustine, that, one of those early leaders of the church, he said, science, I mean, I'm sorry, he said, miracles are not a contradiction of nature. They are simply a contradiction of what we understand about nature. Are you, are you tracking? So Jesus said to them, I could tell you how I'm doing it, but you wouldn't understand. But the day will come I'm going to send a teacher who will cause you to understand, and then greater works than these will you do because I go to my Father. Listen, <laughs> if you're one of those Christ followers who's really, really into miracles, and you're all about the signs and wonders thing, this ought to excite you to the core. 
because now the thing Jesus told his disciples 2,000 years ago, we're privileged to be living in a time where we can see, and it is this. There are absolute laws in the kingdom of God that when you understand the culture of kingdom living, you can rise up and you can live a miraculous life that even the early disciples only dreamed of living. Oh, they did some things. They saw some miracles. But when they said to Jesus, how can we do it? He said, once I send the teacher and you start learning, you'll be able to do even more than this. I think we're on the cusp of something right now in the history of humanity. I think we are already seeing with the advent of this nascent science called quantum science, we're seeing the kingdom of God with a clarity that we never got it in church and we never would get it in church. Remember, God can speak in a lot of ways. He speaks through the heavens. The heavens declare the glory of God. He speaks through music, art, words, in a lot of science. He speaks in a lot of ways. In fact, I'll talk more about this another time, but the word science didn't even exist more than 300 years ago. It was only with the, with the coming of Galileo and others that the word science even came into existence. Before that, you know who studied what we now call science? Theologians, philosophers. So don't be skittish and nervous about us talking about science together because all science really is in its pure form is, is a study of how the Creator works in His creation. And there are absolute laws that we can learn about God's kingdom, about the matrix about the quantum life that can revolutionize the way they live. So I want to encourage you, open your heart and ask the teacher, show me, I'm ready to listen, and it'll happen.